It was late at night. The dormitory was pitch black. I needed help to study. To my surprise, my blunt classmate helped me study. He not only helped me that day, but he's the reason why I'm standing in front of you all today. I was raised by my grandparents after losing my mother at a very young age and not knowing my father. When I finished primary school, my grandparents decided to put me in a boarding school. I was over the moon. Little did I know that I was going to St. Joseph's. St. Joseph's is a boarding school that was built by the Catholics 100 years ago. It is known for two things. Number one is for students of all ages, as young as three years old, all the way to 60. And number two, the students have some form of physical disability. I was an exception. My grandfather had negotiated with the priest that I will come and study in the school in reduced tuition and I will help the other students in any way I could. That's all they had. I cried on my first day, overwhelmed by the sheer number of students I saw and the place I will call home. Some of them didn't have hands, some of them couldn't see, some of them couldn't hear, some of them they were on wheelchair. All I wanted to do was to leave the school. I was asking myself why and why would my grandparents bring me to this place instead of being with other kids like me. But the truth is, I was very young to appreciate the opportunity my grandparents were giving me at that time. Irrespective of the deal that my grandfather had struck with the priest, I was determined to leave. And the path seemed so simple enough. I just needed to study hard, get good grades, and look for someone to pay school fees, school fees for me to go to a better school. And the idea <laughs> made sense. All I needed to do was to go and execute that. As you know, guys, strategy makes us until it goes to execution. But the question was, how would I study at night when lights went off at 9.30 p.m.? Like really, <laughs> how would I study when we all slept in a big hole like this next to each other and we only had one light switch? And studying in the bathroom was uncomfortable. It was at that time when I lost hope. But something started to dawn on me when I was in class. I sat next to my blind classmate. Mabato. Mabato is the one, one of the most hardworking students I've ever met in my life. He lost his eyesight at a very young age and he learned how to use the braille. To those who don't know, a braille is the form that is, is the written form utilized by the blind, the visually impaired, that enables them to read by touch instead of, um, instead of sight. His passion was teaching. In class, I would watch him take notes using his braille, and I will see that he will miss some very important information because the teacher will move very fast. On the other hand, I will take notes very easily. Back in, at the hostel when lights went off, I would notice that my daughter would start revising because he didn't need light. He would revise under his, inside his blankets. At that time, I realized that I needed to work with my daughter. We both had something that the other person needed. I told them that, look, from now onwards, do not worry about taking notes in class. I will do the dirty work of taking notes. And after school, I'll give you the notes and I will help you revise as well. And you we'll do assignments together. When lights went off, please help me revise. He liked the idea. I took my bed and I put it next to his. We became best friends. We became inseparable. We would study until midnight. That is when, at the age of 13, I learned a very powerful lesson. A lesson that I came to appreciate with age and hindsight. I learned that I needed to see my friends succeed in as much as I wanted to succeed myself. I learned that I needed to remove competition and individualism in my head and embrace it with collaboration and community. I learned that I needed to give my friend the best notes so that I can revise in the dark. To cut the story short, I became the best student in the school. I found someone to pay school fees for me in a better school. I became the first choice student to go to the African Leadership Academy in Johannesburg. I worked for McKinsey & Company in Shanghai. I worked for a private equity firm in Shanghai. I graduated with a master's degree in Chinese philosophy at Peking University. 
Of course, many other factors came to play a huge part in my life, including luck, but I will never forget the lessons that I learned from Mabato. My friend Mabato became the first blind, became the first blind student to graduate from university. He's now a teacher and soon to be a lecturer. But as we all grow up, we tend to think of ourselves, the star of the show, the smartest guy in the room. And that was me as well when I launched my first venture two years ago. The lessons that helped me to be where I am, I forgot all of that. I embraced the winner at all cost mentality, the idea that I wanted to disrupt the industries. I launched my first business in Uganda, focusing on last mile distribution. The FMCG supply chain is broken. The Mikli Man is taking advantage of the informal retailers. We need to disrupt them. I launched my business. We grow very fast. But soon something happened. My business came crashing when prices started fluctuation and we lost all our customers. Looking back, I wish I partnered with the distributors, the Mikli Man that I was disrupting, and helped them reach more customers, creating a win win model. Now, I've launched my second venture, guided by the principles I learned from my blind classmates and from my, my first venture. My, my company is called Juice. We partner with companies and make sure that NAD is paid for their employees. But we're doing it in a very different way. We're working with SACOS, the savings and credit cooperatives. We're working with banks. We're working with the mobile money providers like MTN in Swaziland, for example. And what we do, is that we are creating a win-win model for everybody. The circles and banks are winning from a, a higher return of their investment for being our liquidity partner. The MTN mobile money providers, they are winning from an increased customer base. The companies that we are partnering with are winning as productivity increases and the company financial stress is taken out of their employees and also retention is increasing as well in their, in, in their company. The employees are also winning as well, because now they have the liquidity to cover expenses and emergencies before payday, and they avoid being targeted by predatory credit lenders. And we're also winning. I recently received a letter that I've kept in my pocket from one of our uh, clients that have kept me going <laughs> in the difficulties of entrepreneurship. She wrote, to Juice, last month was the first time I did not borrow money from a loan shark. Thank you, Sitler. Sitley is a single parent and a mother of three who works at a retail shop. So the question I want to leave you all with is to the leaders, investors, policymakers, fellow entrepreneurs, what could we achieve if we leverage our differences and collaborated? Thank you. <laughs>